Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Vandana Ramanathan. I am a fertility specialist with Garbagudi IVF Center, Marathali branch. So today I am going to talk to you regarding the steps in the process of IVF. So first and foremost, let us understand what is IVF. Now the full form of IVF is in vitro fertilization. So what do we do in IVF? So once a couple comes to us, first we evaluate the couple and based on the couple's history and the results that we get of their uh, blood tests and sonography and semen parameters we plan what treatment the couple requires once we have decided that the couple needs to undergo ivf uh, then we call the couple on the second day of the lady's period second or maximum third day and on this day we do something called an ultrasound scan and in that we find out how the uterus and ovaries are how the follicles are and if everything looks fine we do a blood test uh, to check for the hormonal parameters. Once everything is normal, we decide to go uh, for the first step of IVF, which is called ovarian stimulation. Now, what is ovarian stimulation? So this is considered as a first step of IVF, where we start the lady on injections. These injections are usually gonadotropin injections, and these continue on a daily basis for a period of 10 to 12 days. Now, during this 10 to 12 days, we also call the lady for monitoring her follicular growth that is called follicular monitoring scans, which is probably uh, four to five times over the period of 10 to 12 days. And we also do a few blood tests. These are hormone tests again, two or three times in the course of the ovarian stimulation process. Now, this is the first step. Now, at the end of 10 to 12 days, when all the follicles are good size, we need to do a procedure called as oocyte retrieval. That is the second step of IVF. Now, what is oocyte retrieval? So, once we have stimulated the ovaries, we need to take out these eggs because in IVF, the eggs and the sperms are uh, taken out and the remaining procedure is done in a laboratory. So the th second procedure is the oocyte retrieval procedure. Now this procedure is done under anesthesia at, in, at our center. Uh, why do we do it under anesthesia? Because uh, in oocyte retrieval, we have to pass a needle through the vagina into the ovaries and aspirate all the follicles and take out the eggs. So because we are using a needle, uh, you know, pricking the lady with a needle, it can be get a little painful. So to make her more comfortable, we do it under anesthesia. So in the oocyte retrieval procedure, what we do is uh, we aspirate all the follicles. So follicles usually have fluid and the egg is a microscopic structure, which is usually floating in this uh, follicular fluid. So once we aspirate all the fluid, uh, this follicular fluid is screened under the microscope and we pick out the eggs from this. So this is the second step that is the oocyte retrieval procedure. Once uh, we have uh, taken out the follicular fluid and screened and taken out the good quality eggs, which is also called the mature eggs, uh, we go to the step 3 of the IVF process. Step 3 is collecting the uh, male partner semen sample. What uh, Once the eggs are ready, we have to collect uh, the semen sample from the male partner. This semen sample is processed and washed and made uh, ready again and then we have to proceed with the next step. So uh, we have seen that we have taken out the eggs and uh, you know prepared the sperms. So coming to the step four of the IVF procedure. Now the step four of IVF procedure consists of injecting the eggs with the sperms. Now there are two ways to do it. One is simple IVF where the eggs and sperms are kept in a dish and they're allowed to fertilize on their own. And the second is a more advanced procedure called ICSI that is intracytoplasmic sperm injection where each mature egg is injected with a good quality sperm by the embryologist in the IVF lab. So this is the step four of the IVF procedure where the eggs and sperms are, the eggs are injected with the sperms. Then, then comes the uh, fifth step where on the day after the injection of the oocytes, we will be looking for fertilization of the eggs that is called fert check. And after this is the culture of the embryos. So once the oocytes are fertilized, the fertilized oocytes are allowed to stay in culture for a period of three to five days. And uh, depending on how the embryos progress, the uh, good quality embryos, either it can be day three embryos or day five embryos, also known as blastosis, these are now ready to be used. So uh, this is the procedure of IVF. Now coming to the final step is the embryo transfer. Now, uh, as we have uh, you know seen, now embryos are ready. Now, what is embryo transfer? Embryo transfer is the final step where the embryos are uh, inserted into the uterine cavity and uh, 
this can again be done either as a fresh embryo transfer or a frozen embryo transfer now whether a couple requires fresh embryo transfer or frozen embryo transfer will depend on their history uh, their other parameters and usually this decision is taken by the doctors and the couple after a proper detailed discussion so if it's a fresh embryo transfer on the day that on the day that the embryos are ready uh, the good quality embryos one or two can be inserted into the lady's uterine cavity in case it's a frozen embryo transfer the embryos are frozen on the day that they are ready and after a period of maybe a break of one month or so the lady's uh, uterus is again prepared for an embryo transfer uh, so how do we do that we usually you know start her on some medications to help with the growth of the lining once the lining is of good thickness and it's looking healthy then we transfer these embryos into her uterine cavity with a very thin catheter called a embryo transfer catheter and uh, this is again a very painless procedure and most often it is done without any anesthesia after the embryo transfer for a, after a period of 2 weeks there is a blood test called beta hcg that is done and through this blood test the couple will come to know whether they have conceived or not so if the beta hcg is positive it means that they have conceived if it's negative it means that they have not conceived so this is in short the procedure and the steps of ivf uh, i hope this video has been useful If you still have any queries please feel free to drop your questions in the comment box and we will answer them thank you